microphone here, there we go. Good morning, welcome to all of you, glad to see you. Uh, those of you here in person and those at home, we welcome you. I'm Maylee Hughes, the rector, and we're delighted that you've joined us this morning. If you're able, let us stand for the opening hymn. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gebeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. 
The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 20 together. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his holy place and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down, but we will arise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King and answer us when we call. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer know him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. 
See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord the kingdom, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, and as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Jesus said, 如同人把种撒在地上收成的时候到了又长出大枝篮This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, may be seated. We have before us today two kingdom parables, so called because Jesus says something like, the kingdom of heaven is like, followed by a conclusion. Of course, most preachers focus on the short parable in the middle and tell comfortable stories about great things growing from small seeds. In his painting, The World's Smallest Seed, Jim Jengnet shows a thriving growing city at the foot of a beautiful giant tree filled with beautiful exotic birds. If you know me, you know I'm not necessarily going there. That's not what mustard looks like. Is mustard a plant or a weed? The answer, of course, is yes. Do you know how to tell plants from weeds in the ground? My friend Isabel shared with me what she was taught. Pull on it gently. If it comes out of the ground easily, Oops, it was a plant. Don't pull any more of those. 
If it refuses to budge, you have yourself a weed. Good luck with that. <laughs> On my annual silent retreat, we offer a morning energy gift to the retreat center. At our former retreat center, they always wanted the vegetable garden tended. I do not have a green thumb. Despite all appearances, I have a black thumb. I always volunteered to pull weeds in the vegetable garden, but had to constantly run to the gardener to verify my choices. At our current retreat center, if we ever get to go back to in-person retreats, I volunteer for hiking trail maintenance. Much easier. If it's in the middle of a narrow trail, it's a weed, full stop. The first parable today was not about a vegetable garden, but about grain fields, which in the farmer's view, grow he does not know how. But he needs to be ready to harvest at the right time and know how to tell wheat from weed. Is yellow mustard native to California? The answer, of course, is no. There are legend, legends about how mustard arrived and spread in California. One legend is that Russians who settled in Northern California brought it accidentally in sacks of wheat that they carried. It is also probable that Franciscan missionaries brought European plants with them as they traveled up the coast, which included mustard, a popular spice. Further legend has it that the Padres spread the seed along El Camino Real purposely to mark out a golden road or rosary of missions. If it's true that the Padre spread it this way, it's also true that it kept spreading and spreading and spreading. The California Department of Food and Agriculture classifies mustard as a pest, which is a designation they use for both insects and plant species. Firefighters dread it because the high winds can spread wild, in high winds it can spread wildfires rapidly and is tall enough to be like a fire ladder to spread flames to nearby trees. In Lectio Divina Bible study, after the passage is read through, each person is invited to share a word or phrase that jumped out at them. It might be different than what has jumped out during a previous reading. What jumped out at me this time was the conclusion. Here's the translation from the Living Bible. He used many such illustrations to teach the people as much as they were ready to understand. In fact, he taught only by illustrations in his public teaching, but afterwards, when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain his meaning to them. Why did Jesus use the mustard for his illustration, and why did only the disciples get a private explanation while the gospel writers make us guess how it should be interpreted? Explanations would make the job of preachers so much easier. The parable of the mustard seed also appears in Matthew and Luke. In Matthew, it appears in the middle of the parable of the sower and with the parable of the weeds among the wheat and the parable of the yeast. The Reverend Dr. David Lowe's says, neither mustard seed nor yeast was viewed positively in Jesus' world. Mustard was a weed. Dreaded by farmers the way today's gardeners dread kudzu, crabgrass, or bindweed. Why then compare the kingdom of God to a pernicious weed and pollutant? Jesus' followers wouldn't have been thrilled either about the idea of a bunch of birds nesting in big mustard bushes in or near their fields. Instead of the beautiful, exotic posing birds in Jenknitz art, such birds are creatures that eat seeds and crops. According to Lowe's, parables are meant to overturn, to deconstruct, and ultimately to transform our lives. We should not treat parables too literally. Actually, I don't like the word illustration used in the Living Bible translation. A parable is not an illustration or proverb. It is similar to a fable or allegory, but a parable more specifically, uses human characters and is meant to teach a moral or spiritual lesson. Lowe said, we might imagine that these parables will do and therefore mean several things. 
Why would Jesus compare the kingdom to invasive weeds and birds? I sure hope Jesus explained this one to the disciples. Lowe's suggests both mustard seed and yeast have this way of spreading beyond anything you'd imagined, infiltrating a system and taking over a host. It's that taking over bit that we fear, right? While it's true that the kingdom is a place where great growth comes from small starts, I think the parable invites us to think more expansively about what God's kingdom might look like. The kingdom includes people who don't look like each other, who don't think like or vote like each other, who love the wrong people, who worship the wrong way, who like the wrong music. I think Jesus was all about expanding ideas about who was welcome, who is included, what nourishes souls, and what makes someone righteous. God's kingdom is open to everyone, including some we might think of as undesirable. We like to be in control of nice, ordered gardens with no pests, but God has a different idea of what order looks like and who can join in the feast. God sees different possibilities than we see. Patterson Clark is an artist that uses alien weed, his word for non-native plants, in his art. He says that non-native plants can upset an ecological balance, and such vegetation needs to be properly harvested to restore balance. But he also points out that those harvested weeds present a superabundance of food, medicine, fuel, chemical, pigments, lumber, paper fibers, and cordage. In California wine country, vintners have a very different view of mustard than the state of California. Have you noticed that many vineyards get covered in mustard bushes between the rows of grapevines before the grape growing season starts? It's grown on purpose, and then just before bud break, it's turned to mulch which provides nutrients and phosphorus to the grape plants. Mustard also contains a biofumigant, that is, a natural pesticide that keeps in check microscopic worms that can damage the plants. Maybe this is where Jesus was going with this parable. God's kingdom is expansive, and those weeds might turn out to be very good for the kingdom. Please stand if you're able and let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, starting at the bottom of page 6 of the bulletin. We love our faith, not our sight. Bless 
trusting that God hears our prayers, let us cry to the Lord, saying, We call upon your name, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for the church. Keep us steadfast in faith and love, that we may pro proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. We call upon your name, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for the world. For love, your son Jesus died for all. We call upon your name, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for all creation. Bless seeds to produce. Bless fields to yield their crop. Bless those who plant and those who gather. May all be blessed by the harvest. We call upon your name, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for all artists, poets, dancers, and musicians. Remember their offerings of beauty and inspiration and prosper their plans. We thank you for the blessed gift of creativity. We give you thanks for our many blessings and for those who have anniversaries and birthdays this week and graduations and other occasions, especially Scott, Tish, Winston, Jim, Chase, Colonel Francis, Susan, and those now named silently aloud or in the comments. We call upon your name, O Lord, Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for those in need. Answer them in their day of trouble. Send them help and strengthen them to stand, especially Dan, Donna, Arlene, the, Car the Carimanian family, Captain Austin, Davison serving the church and people in Bogota, Colombia, those in the U.S. and throughout the world convected, uh, infected with COVID-19, the unemployed and under employed, the houseless, and those now named silently, aloud, or in the comments. We call upon your name, O Lord. Answer us when we call. We call to you, O Lord. Hear our prayers for the dying and the dead. Raise those who have died in the body to newness of life. Grant them a home with you forever. We remember those who have died from COVID-19 in the U.S. and throughout the world, and those thou name silently aloud or in the comments. We call upon your name, O Lord. Shangdi啊，主曾经使我们在共同生活中联系在一起。当我们为正义和真理奋斗时，求主帮助我们彼此面对，不存怨恨和恶毒的心，以互谅互敬的精神一起工作。这都是靠着我们的主耶稣基督。阿门。Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, through the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. Again, good morning. A uh, special welcome to people who are visiting and worshiping with us for the first time, those in person and those online. We are thrilled that you're here with us. And um, as soon as our, well, I was going to say, we'll, we can mingle a little bit more, but I think now we can mingle a little bit more outside. Um, so please introduce yourself to us so we can get to know you some. Um, as you see, the piano is still not here yet. <laughs> The saga continues, but I'm hoping it's going to come to an end. Um, it's supposed to be picked up on the 17th, which is Thursday. And then it's got to go to L.A., then it's got to go back to Stockton, then it's coming to San Jose. Don't ask me. I, I don't understand this. But anyway, so it will hopefully be here the next week. Is that right, Michael? Well, if not, next half week, the week after. Oh, if, if you don't see it next week, it'll be the next week. Oh, gosh. I mean, honestly... <laughs> You want a good company, open a piano moving company. Gosh. Anyway, um, so uh, as most of you know, but we are um, raising money to pay for this piano, uh, $60,000 to buy it and move it and tune it and all that good stuff um, to get it in here. And it is a concert grand, so it will allow us to host wonderful groups of musicians and individual musicians. Um, which has been our goal all along. So if you would like to help us financially, you can give us a gift. Uh, you could buy a piano key. There are eight, 80, 88 of them. Um, and so $300 a key. How about that? That's, that's a bargain, right? We'll even let you play that note. <laughs> so if you're able to help us, please do. And uh, just write on your check, piano fund, or use PayPal, or however you want to do it. We Greatly appreciate it. Uh, this afternoon at 515, we have evening prayer in Mandarin on YouTube. And the youth are going to be meeting in person tonight for the first time at 6 o'clock in the parish hall. Um, if you need more information about that, you can probably see Leah. Nathaniel's not here, but Leah probably knows everything there is to know. Um, and on Tuesday and Thursday, we have morning prayer at 1015 on YouTube. This Tuesday night, our vestry meets. And um, I think that's kind of about it. Um, it's summertime. I feel like I'm in Georgia today. It's so humid. I don't like that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we are in California, thankfully. So it's time for our offering. Please give generously as God is always generous to us. Walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice unto God.
go on, I want to thank my husband, Alan Hughes, on recorder, and Michael Burroughs on organ for the beautiful music this morning. And also, I want to um, remind you that we have candles in the columbarium and candles in the back of the nave that you are invited to light. Um, the tradition here is usually that people have done it following communion, so um, I know everybody's kind of afraid to move, but you can move a little. You can light candles. It's all right. It's all well. So please stand for the Eucharistic prayer. with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Rachel, Leah, and Rebecca, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing our Father. gifts of God for the people of God.
Gracious God, you know what is in our hearts better than we do. In this bowl, we have put before you some of our prayers and intention, needs, sorrow, and thanksgiving. We offer these to you knowing that your son promised that those who pray in secret will be rewarded openly. We pray that our love for you may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight until our love is like that of your son, Jesus, and embraces all of your creation. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 你们要在平安里敬爱主和侍奉主。Thanks be to God.